here coming to you from New York City. I am actually in East Harlem and I'm meeting up with a yarn bomber extraordinaire, Naomi Rag. I've been following her for years and maybe you have seen some of her work on my channel. If I have any videos that feature Naomi, I will link to them underneath this video so you can check them out. I did visit her monarch, gorgeous, enormous butterfly, which is why I'm wearing my butterfly t-shirt today. It's also a very hot day in July in New York City. So we're meeting up. She's gonna take us on a little tour of what she has in the neighborhood right now. It's just a few pieces, but she's also working on something special that's going to be debuting in August. So definitely a maker you want to watch. She is an artist, she is a crocheter, and I just love her work. So I'm really excited to meet up with her today. I found her. It's Naomi. Okay. So tell me, where are we? We are in East Harlem on the corner of 102nd and Lexington. And we are at the Frenchie coffee shop, which inside you have a yarn bomb. So tell us about this yarn bomb. So during the pandemic, I would come into this coffee store, coffee shop, and see the owners who I knew. And the whole place just looked a bit empty and lonely. And, and I wanted to do something nice for them. So I asked them if I could yarn bomb their wall. And were they like, yes, right away? A little reluctant? Were they like, who are you? Are you crazy? It What's yarn a, bombing? <laughs> it was a bit, they were a bit slow off the mark, but I think they were just so busy with other stuff. Mm -hmm. They knew me, they knew my work, and they yeah, she said, okay, we trust you. But it took me some time to decide what to do. But I went back to my original plan and just covered the wall in crochet. Okay. What was the plan and tell us, walk us through it. Every day I walked in to get a coffee, again, just to support the local store. And I just saw a wall of crochet mm. in pinks and purples, some fluffy. And after going through loads of other ideas, that's what I went back to. So I just mm. crocheted backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards in different size rectangles and threw it up on the wall. Yeah. Now, did you measure it? And then, like, yes. how does that work? Yeah, I measured it. I measured it a couple of times. And then I drew it in my sketch pad. And I knew that if I did one giant rectangle, it would be too heavy and it would be saggy. So I decided mm. to do it in strips. Love that. So, and I also wanted to change it up a little. So I had some horizontal pieces, some vertical pieces. And then I laid it out. I laid the size out on the floor of a studio that was lent to me with masking tape oh. and I just filled that in and I put masking tape for where the sockets were and where the electrical box <gasps> was. Smart. And I just filled it all in. And had a great time. How is it attached? With many staples. Alright, well let's go take a look. Wow. Ah. On my heart was John Lennon's 80th birthday. Being from Liverpool too, I wanted to acknowledge that. And um, and also I've done a smaller version of this before. So I thought it'd be a great way for people to be able to uh, collaborate together. Everybody sent in a flower, maybe one, maybe 50. Um, and yeah, I think I threw it up in October. Yeah, I think it was October. Of 2020. 2020, yeah. So it's starting to look pretty faded now, but you know, I had people who, who work on 110th Street who said that they now got off 103rd Street so they could walk past it every day. Oh my gosh, I yeah, love that! I love that too. And so did you need to get permission to put it on this particular fence? This is my was... corner. Your corner. I, I don't know if I'm allowed to say that, but <laughs> I've been putting work on this this corner, on this fence for seven years. Wasn't the butterfly here? Yeah. Yeah. The butterfly was here and there's going to be a new butterfly soon. Mm. 
but my first ever yarn bomb was on this one. Now, right here. I think that you have, what was it, the first one? It was a blue iris, but people didn't really know it was a blue iris. They thought maybe it was a butterfly, they weren't really sure, but they liked it because it was so unusual. Yeah. Now, talk about, because I think you really have a gift for taking a group of items that are maybe not cohesive and making something amazing about it. So, with it, I should say. So, oh yeah. look, there's a Nick Collage one. I see a Nick Collage flower. So how do you go about, I mean, how do, where do you start when you get all these flowers? So I've usually got a concept already, so I knew I was going to do the peace sign. Yes. I didn't know how many flowers I would get, but I kind of guesstimated because of like the experience I have over the years, I would get like at least four or five hundred. Oh but gosh. you know, we're talking, this is one. Yeah. <laughs> you know, this is two. So here, there's, I think there's 600, 650 flowers. So some of them were kind of glued on at the last minute. Uh -huh. um, but yeah, I've always got a concept. So I, I just build with what I have. Yeah. And I quite often have, I mean, the, my role takes, it can take weeks to sew everything together, to glue it all together. Um, and then if I'm desperate for leaves, say for something, I'll ask people I know to make some leaves. Yeah. So do you do sewing and gluing, you said? Yeah. So what I did, it's actually in about five or six pieces mm -hmm. so it would be this all the way past your flower to there would be one solid piece okay. i sewed and glued that together in the studio okay and then on the fence it's zip tied onto the fence right yeah it would take too long to sew it securely mm -hmm. now what are your personal rules for like when it needs to come down it needs to come down because it just looks a little shabby to yeah you. So I haven't been passing this every day because I've actually moved. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, when it's faded, my husband has a rule that when it starts to get saggy, he'll tell me and he'll tell me like every week. Uh, uh, so he just told me last night about some gerberas and he's like, oh, they really need to come down now. Yeah. So, but when it's faded, but actually I like there to be a blank canvas for a, maybe a month. So we'll take this down about a month before the new monarch goes up. Yeah. Cool. That big purple one is mine. That's a knitted one. Ooh, look, there's some sparkle. Oh my gosh, it's so cool that you remember what people sent in. Well, I love that people know their flowers too. So all, all the photographs I took and posted online, people said, I can see my flower. Yes. Which was really nice. Yeah. Now, if someone wants to be a part of your yarn bombs, how best can they be a part of it? The best thing is to watch my stories because I'll quite often ask for contributions. Um, and then I, I'll tell you how to send them and send them to me or sometimes you can drop off at Ninja City. Yeah. Um, but yeah, watch my stories. I work a lot with women in the neighborhood, women in the Bronx, and at the moment working with Chinatown community, but there's always ways to contribute. Oh. You can just ask. Do you notice people tag it on on Instagram, like non-fiber people? Uh, yeah, they'll tag me, although it's really super faded, but they won't tag Yarn Bomb unless they know that this is a Yarn Bomb. Right. So sometimes it's hard to find other people's posts yeah like here's a little this is your tag right here right yeah you can't see it anymore i love that you keep that there though <laughs> it took me a while i never used to do that and then i saw other like alex was tagging his work and i'd see other um yarn bombers do that so i was really anonymous and then i was like well why not yeah it's, it's good it's good to get a little bit of credit sometimes but the people thought the school did it for a long time. Yeah. They thought the teachers were doing it. Yeah. So. I love that. I made these 
for a completely different site and somebody took them down. Like when I, I found London Kays, the koalas, uh -huh. in I found them in Soho, like stuffed in a fence. I was just walking past on one on a day. I never go there and I found them. And someone did that with mine. They just very nicely took them off. I just stuck them in a corner. It's so weird, but like kind, but like we don't want this here, but we're not going to destroy it. We're right. just going to put it right. side. So I found a new site for them and I've used this site before and the parking lot owners were really happy to have some art on the fence. Yeah. But yeah, what, they've been up a while. What type of flower is this? It's supposed to be gerberas. Okay. Oh yeah, the daisies. Oh, are they? Yeah, they are. Yeah. I've done them before, but in different colors, and they call them like spring flowers, but these are gerberas. Yeah. Gerber daisies. Can you call them gerberas? I would say gerberas. Yeah, in England, in England we say gerberas. Yeah. Now, these petals, they're all different sort of tones, but they're marled. Yeah, so when I do this kind of flower, and the same with like sunflowers, and actually I've got some in my bag, I'll use the same shades, but different tones. So it gives it a bit more interest, a mm -hmm. bit more depth, rather than just the same petal repeated. And also because I get bored quite easily when I'm crocheting, mm -hmm. and that's why I do large flowers, not lots of small flowers. Um, if I was doing the same color scheme all the way through, I would. Yeah, I wasn't very happy. Love it. And I also used my stash. So, like, I don't know where this came from, but I had it, so I used it. I yeah. got given a lot of yarn. Yeah. Okay. So Chelsea and I did this together. So Chelsea is make more fresh? Yes. Okay. And what was the assignment here? Why did you want to make this? So one of the girls who helped set up the community fridge, um, she reached out to me and she said she loved my work and would I consider doing something on the block? And then when I came to visit, I saw this gate and said, oh, how can I use this? Mm -hmm. She got permission and I just came up with the idea of doing the fruit. And Chelsea's the only person I know that makes this kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Like she makes like, uh, hats and all kinds of headdresses. So I said to her, hey, do you want to help out? So she made like these ones, um, coconuts, um, and I did this very faded dragon fruit, some the watermelon, dragon. and some of my flowers I had from another project. And a, a, one of our friends, Florence, she made the avocado. Yeah, it was so much fun. We just we made it over the summer. Yeah. And, um, and then just yeah, came together to put it up. Tell me about the community fridge. The Albario fridge is a fridge mainly stocked with, I think it's vegetarian food, and it's it's for anybody who is in need. Anybody can just walk up and open it and see yeah. what's inside, and you can put stuff in it as well. Mm -hmm. So, you want some ice cream drinks? Yeah. <laughs> it's mainly meant to, it's aimed at people who are living a lot less than the rest of us. Yeah, and we have, it looks like people are leaving some canned goods also. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but they've had to replace it several times because it's outside and it's not an outdoor fridge. Yes. So they've now built this and recently repainted it. And Love invited it. other artists to do murals on the box here yeah. and actually to paint on the fridge. Yeah. So when I first installed this, a friend of mine had painted the fridge with all flowers and it was really beautiful. Love that. I think we might just do the, we're going to do a new piece. I think we might just do a similar thing again. Yeah, I because love I it. I don't really know, like, what would we do, like, tins of beans or vegetables. Yeah. Or, but this was so successful. Love it. Welcome to the Fresh Oils Community Garden, a floral yarn installation, Naomi Lawrence, and the Walls or Tease Gallery in Center Community, September 2020. All right, tell us about this one. So I am good friends with City Seminary of New York and I've done several projects with them now and I've been on a couple of their working artist groups and this was this was being planned pre-pandemic. We were going to meet in senior centres, we were going to meet in the garden, we were going to crochet together and we were going to probably cover the fences all the way around the garden and then the pandemic. So everything went online, we couldn't go into the senior centres so we decided to continue and make as many as we could, but it was a very small group, I'd say less than 10 people. Some had never crocheted flowers before, and this is quite a complex pattern. 
um, I gave credit to the pattern writer in the original post. But um, and a couple of my friends made some, and I really they mentioned about still putting it inside but I said my heart was really to cover the fence outside so that the passerby could see it because that's where I always think uh, you get much more value from uh, like the the person who goes down this block every day like who's going to go inside especially in the pandemic yeah so um so yeah I came up with this design it's chicken wire no it's not oh it's chicken wire up there it's because it's, it's oh it looks like burlap like, burlap here and chicken wire and burlap there. Oh, to make it go up above. Yeah, because you have the same you have as to that. support it, yeah. So I had to build it up. I wanted it to look like it was a, a living yarn for Matt's vine. Yeah. So there's several ways I could have done it, but also a lot of my work, I do try and still, even though it's a little bit three-dimensional, I still try to keep it pretty flat. Um, because then people don't get knocked against it or it doesn't get pulled off. Yeah, can you imagine someone suing you for injury due to yarn bobbing? I mean, <laughs> yarn. I mean it's only in New York. Day. It might happen oh, one day. I love it. And these little centers, so people had freedom to do little yes, I fun always, centers. I always ask people to be creative in the middle, whether it's with a button or mm. whether it's with some, some nice yarn. Because I know I'll never forget the blossom tree that I did way back in 2015 when people. I remember this one girl said, I had these vintage buttons and I was wait I was waiting to use them on something and I, this was the perfect project. And I remember I could always see them in the security. Mm -hmm. So yeah, the centers make it really, and the leaves. I like this button where you pull the yarn through and then make it dance. Yeah, That's that fun. was a friend of mine. I think Meredith made that one. But people get creative. Yeah. September. So September and October 2020 was a good season. Yeah. Because of lots of new work. Yeah. But I, I had a, um, somebody tag me just a couple of days ago, like an influencer tagged me the other day because they passed it. Um, so that's nice. People are still noticing it and uh, enjoying it. I think it's good to have these laminated info pages. Oh, you know what? I meant to bring and wear my pink Naomi rag t-shirt today. <gasps> And I remember when I thought of it, I was like, you should put it in your suitcase right now. And I didn't. Shoot. Okay. I know I could have worn mine too. What, what were we thinking? <laughs> this icon is available on merchandise, which I will link to underneath this video. And you were just saying off camera that we are speaking in July 2021. And you have at least three different projects going right now. Did you at want to least. mention some of them? Yeah. So the Chinatown Yarn Circle is a project that I actually, I met Tina through City Seminary, through the organization that I did this with. And she said, oh, we, you know, she doesn't crochet, she's a mobilizer. And she said, I would love to get you to work with some women that I know to make something. And it, originally it was going to go in Queens. And then uh, I think Chinatown, I think they were keen to have the piece down in Columbus Park. Because I used a grant I got from them. We applied together. And uh, so that's happening. That's going to go up the end of September. I'm working on a mural to replace this one. This one I did. I bought you those postcards you can give away. Thank you. Um, so I did that in 2019 and I have another grant. So I'm going to replace that with a new, beautiful new design. Um, and I'm also working with seniors in the Bronx. They're making their own flowers and it's another mural to go on the fence of their housing. And then with the local women I work with in my neighborhood, we're working on two pieces. One with flowers where they've all made their own flowers and another giant monarch butterfly but a, a rainbow monarch this time. I've noticed you use a lot of flowers and insects so what is it about that juxtaposition with the city and then you know the, the florals and just seeing this even against this wrought iron gate like why is that the thing for you? Well my heart is always about flowers my training was as a florist so I you know I noticed the flowers around the city and there's not enough of them. So, you know, we have Central Park, which is an oasis, and Marcus Garvey Park in this neighborhood, but then we have so many fences and gateways in the city. So I guess it's like, it's the urban garden, and uh, I, get, I get to make beautiful flowers, and I get to see them, and you get to see them too, and enjoy them, and, and they always surprise people. Mm -hmm. People literally stop in their tracks and say, oh, what's that doing there? Oh, that's nice. <laughs> oh, yeah. So. I love it. Well, I think that you're such a fine artist and 
I really love seeing your giant, giant flowers that you put up because of the light and just how you recreate them. Is there anything in your bag you want to show us before yeah. we sign off today? So I've been missing making giant flowers. These aren't these aren't giants, but I've I've got a lot of them, and this is part of my new my new mural. So I'm doing uh, wild flowers, native flowers of North America. So this is an echinacea. So I'm actually going to put it on the floor because I have, I'm not squeamish about that. So I've been really enjoying making these. I've so far made about six. And then I've also got um, goldenrod, bloodroot, blue violets, um, some other um, black-eyed Susans. So th again, this is still really small for me, but um, I wanted to incorporate as many flowers as I could and I can't, I can't make it 50 foot, so um, it's only going to be about 25. Love it. Will this have a stem and leaves? Or? Yeah, yeah. yeah it's going, the stem will be about 6 foot. Oh, so it'll come down? About six foot, yeah. But yeah. I'll also, I might make some even bigger ones. Like, now I've seen them, I I miss the large flowers, and mm. that's what I'm known for. But because I've got so many varieties of flowers in this mural, yeah, I have to, some of them do need to be smaller. This is about three foot. I think I am going to make just like a couple of really oversized ones, just to give that depth. Yeah. I can't wait to see it. Yeah, it's fun though. I. I really enjoyed it, and every time I see Echinacea, I'm making some of those. Yes. But yeah, it's really tiny. I love it. It's the smallest. I don't know whether it's a bit too small for me. <laughs> You're rethinking it. Well, you know what? What can you do? You can go around all the petals, and you can make it bigger. I could, yeah. I could make them bigger again. What do you think? Well, I love it, but I, I, I think that if you have the at least a few big ones, it'll be good. Yeah, the golden rod, like each. Each branch of the golden rod is like the size of my arm. Yeah. So that's going to be pretty good. Yeah, it is. That so is I good. Might, actually, I might leave the six small. This is small. Mm -hmm. And I might make like three or four, like five, six foot ones. Yeah. That would be really nice. Yeah, love it. And this sparkly yarn. Oh, yeah. It's so nice. Yeah, I love that. Well, I love a pink sparkle. Oh, isn't that That's not a sparkle. secret. Yeah. A couple of local women who, you know, are paid to... Um, make smaller pieces. So oh, this, they are paid? Yes. Yeah, yeah for, for the mural because it's a funded piece. Yeah, I so that. I outsource. So this is an aster mm -hmm. and I wrote this pattern myself, which is new for me. Um, so I'll say, okay, can you make 20 of these? And Nice. Yeah. So it employs people too. Love that. Yeah. Hey, Naomi, it was such a pleasure spending time with you today. Thanks for inviting me. Thank you for the tour and I cannot wait to see the next Naomi Rags yeah. popping up around the city. For now, we'll say goodbye.